In this video, we're going to focus on changes to the new ANSI ASSP Z359.14-2021 standard for SRDs or self-retracting devices. Many of these changes only affect manufacturers, meaning that the people who design, manufacture, and test the products. However, several of these changes will affect end users and in many cases will affect work practices. These are the changes that we're going to focus on for this video. The first change we're going to discuss is the SRD classification change. SRDs are now classified into two categories, Class 1 and Class 2. Class 1 devices will be rated for tie-off at or above D-ring level only. Class 2 devices will be rated for tie-off above or below D-ring level. It's important to note, Class 2 devices will need to meet the requirements of what were previously known as SRL-LE, or Leading Edge Devices. These classes will replace the previous 2014 versions of Class A, Class B, and also the SRL, LE, or Leading Edge designations. The next change I would like to discuss is arrest distance. Arrest distance requirements have been standardized for both Class 1 and Class 2 devices at 42 inches. The previous revision of the standard had arrest distance requirements of 24 inches for Type A devices and 54 inches for Type B devices. What this essentially means is that potentially in some products, fall clearance requirements could change based on these values. It will be very important when you receive new product to the new standard that you review the instructions for use and verify fall clearances. If any fall clearance values have changed, your processes will need to be updated accordingly. Next up on our list is device labeling. Due to the new classifications as noted earlier, SRDs will be required to be affixed with the label designating which class the device meets, Class 1 or Class 2. For Class 2 SRD models, a fall clearance indicator table will be incorporated into the product labeling at or near the point of attachment to the full body harness. This will indicate the minimum fall clearance based on the position of the worker on the working surface. The next change is average arrest force. During ambient conditions with a 310 pound test mass, the maximum allowed average arrest force has increased from 900 pounds to 1,350 pounds. If you have engineered anchorages, horizontal lifelines that have been designed and installed based off of this value with some sort of safety factor, these will need to be carefully reviewed against the new device specifications when they hit the market. Any increase in average arrest force may jeopardize the safety of the system or reduce the margin of safety it was originally designed for. Lastly, I want to discuss effectivity date. The effectivity date for this standard has changed. It is now February 1st of 2023. After this date, all manufacturers producing product marked with ANSI Z359.14 will need to comply with the latest revision of 2021. Now, with all of that being said, standards are continually reviewed and updated based on the latest hazards, technology, applications, etc. It's always the best practice to make sure that your product meets the latest version of the standard whenever possible. For a full breakdown of the ANSI Z359.14 standard, please check out our technical bulletin listed in the video description. Additionally, rest assured that 3M is working very hard to make sure its portfolio of SRDs is ready to go for the February 1st, 2023 deadline. Thank you.